Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. You are welcome, brethren, to the Daily Fountain devotion of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion today, being Wednesday, the 16th day of November 2022. Let us pray. Our Father and our God will give you thanks and praises because you are the God that reigneth. And who can say a thing? It comes to pass if you have not given your consent. We pray, Lord, that you reign in our lives, even as we participate in this devotion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The topic is at the altar of men. And the text is taken from Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 to 16. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbut, satri, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth down not to worship shall be at the same hour cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sabbat, satri, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews they spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackboard, satre, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery for us. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet fl flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee 
in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, you must judge. Brethren, let me just take a brief background of this very book. The book of Daniel is traditionally accepted to have been written by Daniel himself. It is found in the third division of the canons of the scripture, which is the writings. It was written at a time when the Jews were suffering greatly under the persecution and oppression of, the, of their captor, Nebuchadnezzar, the pagan king of the Babylonians. This very king made a lot of conquests, including Jerusalem. Maybe because of the number of conquests, he magnified himself to be a demigod, seeking to be honored, seeking to be adored, seeking to be worshipped. And as if that was not enough, he made a golden image and placed it at the plain of Dura, which it was six 60 cubits height and 6 cubits width. And he commanded people of all nations, presumably the nations he conquered, including the Jews, to worship that very image he had set up. And the book of Daniel was more of stories and visions which Daniel used to encourage the people of God, particularly the Jews in that land of captivity, that though tyrants may live for a while, but the truth remains that the Holy God, in his own goodness and mercy, will surely restore the sovereignty to God's people. What is altar? Altar is a rest area in the house of worship where people can honor God with offering and sacrifices. Where people can pray and present their needs, their supplications before God. Altar is prominent in the Bible. It is called God's table, a sacred place where the presence of God dwells. A place where people gather to communicate with their God. The word altar comes from the Latin derivative, altarium, which means high, exalted, and also adolere, which means to ritually born or sacrifice. Altars are places where the divine and the human interact. It is a place of exchange of communication and influence with the divine and also with divine response. For instance, Elijah and the Professor Baal on Mount Carmel, when Elijah built an altar for God, offered a sacrifice and called on the name of the Lord, and God came and consumed the sacrifice. And at that very moment, there was a great response. One, the consuming of the sacrifice offered by Elijah. Secondly, the prophets of Baal were able, by seeing the greatness of God, they declared for the Lord that the Lord, he is the king. The Lord, he is the king. Also, Noah after when he had come out from the ark after the flood he erected an altar unto the lord and he offered some good animals which he preserved 
And when God smelled the aroma of Noah's sacrifice, he responded and declared that he would never destroy the world again with flood. King Solomon also, when he finished the building of the temple of God, he offered sacrifices. And when God smelled the aroma, there was a response. God came down, even when Solomon was asleep, and called on him in his dreams and asked him to make requests, whatsoever he needed him to do for him. And Solomon was wise. He asked God for wisdom, for knowledge to lead the people of God. And God responded and said, because you have not asked every other ten, apart from knowledge and wisdom to lead my own people, I will give you what you have requested and I will also give you wealth and every other good thing you have not requested. And no other king that had been before you and that will be after you that will be like you. That's the response. And all these came on altars made unto God. Altar of men. Altar of men could be human beings who have in one way or the other designated themselves as gods or demigods or superhuman seeking to be worshipped, seeking to be adored, seeking to be revered. Many of them have taken the place of God. For instance, in course of their relationship with their fellow human beings, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, we see King Herod. When there was famine in the land of Tyre and Sidon, they came to make peace with the king in order to get some food from the king. And the king addressed them, and the people shouted, Oh, this is really the voice of God. And the king puffed up. He saw himself as God, as God. He took the glory meant for God. And God smoothed him. And he was eaten up by moth. Also, Haman, a prime minister in the kingdom of Atalsasis in Susan, when he received the promotion as a prime minister, he puffed up and saw his, himself as superhuman to be worshipped. And he wanted everybody around him, including Mordecai, to bow and worship him. There are so many others. In our text, we have Nebuchadnezzar as the major character who, by reason of his conquest, including Jerusalem, initiated the captivity of the Jews. He exalted himself as one great and authoritative. Hence, he had the infantry to set up an image and commanded that everybody must bow and worship that image. At a point, he made an overstatement by asking the three Jews who decided not to bow to those idols. He asked them, who is the God that will save you from me? That is to say, he had made himself higher and above God. Had made himself higher and above God. Brethren, I can say unequivocally that the policy and the setting of the image was targeted on these Jews. The same happens in our time. Most often, the leaders, some government, they make policies that will have affect a particular person or group of people just for a selfish purpose. I remember a few years ago, a policy came from the education setting where Christian religious knowledge was completely, conspicuously obliterated from the secondary education curriculum. And I said to myself, yes, this was targeted on Christians. There's no gainsaying in that. Because the Bible has made it clear, there's an instruction from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, where the Bible enjoins us to train up a child in the way 
he will go. So that when he grows old, he will not depart from it. And if this very policy of eradication or removal of Christian religious knowledge from the curriculum had been fully implemented, automatically the, our children would have suffered it. They would have been at the risk of passing through moral decadence. That's what happens. It's just like what happened in, the, 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 in Babylon when a policy was made just to wear down the Christians, just to influence the faith of the people of God negatively. Do we have people like Nebuchadnezzar, Haman, Herod, as authors desiring worship who have made themselves arrogated powers unto themselves as God, who have taken the glory of God. Do we have such people in our time, in our churches, in our families, in our political arena, in our so, so, uh, social environment? People who will not do you any favor of any kind unless you worship them, unless you yield or succumb to their wishes. Brethren, many believers have sacrificed their faith at the altar of these men and women. Reason because of hunger, poverty, quest for wealth, desire for promotion and preferment, because of problem of unemployment, to be employed, to get fame and favor, and to be promoted. Daniel and his friends are the first instance refused to sacrifice their faith at the altar of food from the table of the pagan king Nebuchadnezzar. When they were offered position of authority, the policy of bowing to the idol which Nebuchadnezzar has set up came up. And they were even threatened to, with death if they refused to fall and bow to the image. These young Jews decided for the Lord. They refused to yield. They refused to be influenced by the position which they occupied in the Babylonian kingdom. And they chose even to die than to sacrifice their faith at the altars of these evil men. Brethren, a certain believer from my own area travel to the to lagos from the east for kidnap pastors and because he was promised uh, with employment he was promised with so many goodies in that place but when he went there he discovered that the job they presented to him was this a uh, uh, prominent uh, yahoo plus and he saw enough of money that would have attracted him that would have influenced him negatively. But he said over his dead body, would he, would he abandon his faith for the sake of money? He came back to the east here. He came back to the east. And God, who has never allowed his people to be put to shame, saw his faith and gave him a job in one of the oil companies in Portacourt. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Our God is always faithful. Our Lord is always good. Who rewards those who are faithful with every good thing they desire? Brethren, these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refused to bow before the king's order. And they were cast into the fire. Even there in the fire, God moved there with them because if you are faithful to god god will always be with you he will also be faithful to you because the bible says that god honors those who honor him the question is are you willing are you ready to honor god irrespective of your problems irrespective of what you are passing through are you ready many people have gossiped and lied against their fellow neighbors and human beings in order to be favored or preferred than others to the detriment of their faith. 
the collective response of these three Jews became a case study and worthy of emulation. They exhibited faith and obedience to God rather than men. According to verse 16 to 18. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace. And if he will, and he will deliver us out of thy hands. 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Wow, brethren, this is very, very wonderful. Can we have such people today? Can we receive the testimony these people received in the hands of the king? Because I know when these children proved themselves faithful unto God, God delivered them. And because of their faith, the whole of Babylon who repented and they surrendered unto God. They surrendered unto God. Joseph refused to sacrifice his faith at the altar of a promiscuous woman. Today, if people are presented with wealth, are asked to have affairs with a prostitute. So long as it's involved, money is involved, you will see many running, yielding to that, succumbing. Many today have given their life to adultery, to idolatry, kidnapping, greed, stealing, positions and money at the detriment of their faith. Peter and his friends said, to the Pharisees and Sadducees and teachers of the law, according to our text, that they better obey God than hearken to the voice of men. Obedience to God is very, very important. And the obedience Peter and his friends showcased made the people know of a truth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus ought to be worshipped, that Jesus ought to be magnified and bowed unto. So the obedience of three stray Jews transformed the whole of Babylon. May we be found worthy as Christians, as believers, as a church, like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. May we be found worthy like Joseph in all our dealings, irrespective of our desires and wants. Our God is faithful. For those who will remain faithful, he will never allow them to be put to shame. He will provide for them all their needs according to his riches, which is in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. O God, our Father, we pray thee in your love, make us the three Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel of our generation. People who will not bow down to worship at the altar of men, irrespective of what it will cost them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being part of this devotion. And may you continue to be richly blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.